Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. We are back. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you for the big preview. Bonanza entering round four of the Swiss stage. This is where it gets real good because it's either you're eliminated or you're advancing. I mean, some are going to the next round, but those are winners and losers. It's fully high stakes now. Six matchups across the board to get to, and you got to start with the MSI Revenge T1 versus BLG. Feel like this is the least high stakes because whoever loses is probably getting through the next round. I'm going to say I'm going to be as as unbiased as I can be while wearing a T1 hoodie in this type of situation. <laughs> it's okay, I'll blur it out. We'll blur it out and put the BLG logo. It's yeah, editor's note there. But we got to make sure that when we're talking about this series, as you mentioned, a little bit lower stakes, of course, than the last time we've seen this rematch between these two squads, but a, m a very important redo of this type of series for both of these teams, I think. When you slice it up, what they gain, if they do advance through, put a good performance. You're looking at the T1 angle, that is that redemption. You you, you redeem for that failure before. You're going to look at a lot of these individual matchups in this series as well. You have someone like Zeus in that top side looking for that revenge against Giga Bin, who's going to be carrying it for BLG. And this is a BLG that needs a win of the caliber against T1 to reinstall some of that faith that they can com compete and not just compete at this event, because I think that is without question been answered by their play so far, that they are a top tier team. Are they an elite tier team to join the JDGs, the Gen Gs that we have seen at this event, even the LNG type of performance that we have seen that power pushing through both T1 and BLG are going to get a boost into that category from this series, depending on how well they play. And that Zeus bid matchup, particularly because we know they've had that head-to-head -head before. It feels like these guys are always battling towards the top uh, level of top leaders in the world. It's the craziest thing looking at them. Zeus, 19, bin 20. It feels like we've been talking about these guys for five years, but they're still so young. And we're going to be talking about them for the next five years and probably maybe the next five years after that type of situation. The way that these two players have fulfilled that potential so early in their career and show absolutely zero signs of slowing down with, you know, slowing down from that journey, that trip all the way to the tippity top of mountain domination in the top side. So this is the opportunity also uh, for T1 to prove because they've only gotten wins against LCS teams. So that's not that impressive taking them down. So they have looked good. Obviously, they completely, I mean, Team Liquid, we know they had some fight, but they completely demolished Cloud9. So is this the revenge for T1? Are they finding their form? Don't let Kyria get barred. I think that this is going to be it for T1. The angle that I'm picking here is, of course, I think Zeus has that bounce back in the top side. I'm expecting the form, the control that Faker has shown to be one of these things that is an issue for someone like Yagao, someone who has not necessarily risen to the same heights that we have seen within the last year or two for himself individually. And then that bottom lane, I'm looking at what's going on there. Yes, I've got a lot of respect and a lot of hype and appreciation for Elk and what he's able to do Right now, the hot hand, that's got to be Guma and Kyria, the way they've played so far at the event. They have definitely leveled up since they showed up uh, on the world stage. Then we get to the marquee NA versus EU. Guaranteed top eight finish for a Western squad. G2 are going to be the huge favorites here against an LCS team, as they absolutely should be. The jump out matchup for me, I mean, you go across the board and it's hard to give an individual matchup edge to NRG in any of these, but I'm looking at most important, it's got to be in the jungle because so much runs through contracts and what he does for this NRG squad. And you look at that Gen G series, Yike gets slapped on Maokai duty a bit, doesn't have its huge impact. G2 doesn't win. And we've seen, you know, someone like contracts be able to step up to the caliber of jungler that we're going to see with Yike and the style of junglers that can come with the type of play style that Yike does bring to the, the, the table. You're looking at someone, a comparison for me right now, Blabber with C9 and the way that he is able to play the skill, the aggression, all these type of things. Contracts has been up to that challenge in North America. He has been up to that, you know, I was the guy here before and all these type of things. He has risen to that with NRG. We need him to rise to that type of level in this series against G2. If that's not there, we don't even get 
to I think a lot of these other question marks, a lot of these other battles, which are still very much uphill battles for NRG in this series. I think the other pressure goes on the shoulders of Palafox because I'm expecting, we see it time and time again, Caps kind of rips away from mid lane and is off to help top and bot and get them steamrolling. You could be looking at a scenario where both of those side lanes are struggling uh, for NRG and it's up to Palafox to kind of carry the load because for contracts, it's one thing in NA when you've got solid laners throughout. What happens internationally when all your lanes are bleeding? That's a different game as a jungler entirely. Yeah, and I think for Palafox, the important thing is going to be, you know, uh, where does this performance, what is going to be the result after the last series that we saw from NRG, which was anything but clean, but it is enough to get across, you know, that finish line to the next checkpoint of the race. It's something where you're seeing these type of plays, that aggression, that creativity, that's all good. Some of these whoopsies, the Tali alt going through, some of the rumble ults that do nothing, all these type of things can't happen. That needs to be cleaned up because a squad like G2, a player to the caliber of Caps and a player playing in the form that Caps has got right now, you're going to be done and dusted if that's not up to that level. And then in the bottom lane, I'm issuing that challenge. FBI, Ignar, you got to be up to the task, to handle, to not give up the advantages that you know the duo of Han, Sam, and Mickey wants to bring to the G2 faithful. And especially because we know Hans and Mickey can be super aggressive in that laning phase and Ignar and FBI often just kind of waiting, just farming up, waiting for that team fighting to happen. You might not be able to sit back and wait against Hans and Mickey because they're going in all the time and more often than not, they're getting some 2v2 kills. Other matchup, NA versus EU, is actually probably higher stakes because loser is going home. The El Clasico of NA versus EU going way back to 2013, a decade plus of Cloud9 versus Fnatic. There's no Reckless, there's no Sneaky involved in this anymore, but still, uh, just these two organizations going head-to-head, -head, always a treat. And for me, this whole series comes down to the mid lane. Because if Jimenez doesn't level up or step up from what we've seen in the first few games, th that matchup alone, if you, Humanoid's playing well, is enough to sway a three-game set. I, we're at the point in the tournament where you can start to shift more so away from, okay, what we saw in summer, playoffs, everything else, to more so the recency, what we're seeing right now. How are you playing? What are the performances in the last one, two, three games type of situation? And in that examination, you're looking at Humanoid and you're seeing much more so, maybe not to the full extent, but you're seeing the Humanoid that you recognize, that you know on the international stage, one that has delivered and been a strong performer for the European region. And on the flip side, you look over to Cloud9 and you see a menace, a young player getting their first opportunity, these type of things, and struggling in this opportunity, in this spotlight, and in the role for Cloud9. And that role is mighty important in this series because the advantages, even if there are some for Cloud9 that you can find a way to massage through, push power through and gain for the team, that mid lane is gonna be a problem if you are not up to the task that Humanoid is gonna dish out. And you can even go, you know, across the board, you're probably feeling a lot better about these matchups for Cloud9. I think Berserker, you're giving an edge over Noah in that head-to-head. -head. Trimby, you probably favor when you include the 2v2. Sorry, Sven, I know you've mastered support already. Blabber and Razark were comparable. Fudge has leveled up a little bit at Worlds, and so has Oscar Renan. So everywhere else is comparable. If the Menes can just step up to that humanoid level, or at least better than he's been in the first three games, then you have that avenue for Cloud9. Obviously, this is much closer a matchup than that G2 NRG matchup, though. Yeah, very much so. But, you know, as, as you said, there's no way to sugarcoat it, to undersell this type of thing with Jimenez. You look at the performances that he's had at this event. You look at what is going to be necessary to make sure you're staying at this event at the bare minimum. You have to step it up. You have to find that individual level. We have seen it from him with this Cloud19 before. Uh, whether it's all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes, off the riff, you know, futures, you know, all these type of things that are factoring into it, it you got to find a way to block it out. It has to be focused in. And this performance, whether you're with Cloud9 this year, you're looking for another team next year. I don't care. You got to sell yourself in this event and show you got what it takes to stay. If Cloud9 comes away with this series win, let's just talk about the NA versus EU at this world's event. It's it's NA laughing all the way to the bank so far, even if G2 ends up beating NRG. Uh, that's just a, that's just a fluke, right? 
Uh, you, I don't it's know about that off. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can look at that a little bit later. But this is going to be one of those ones where it's all, I think, really to me, not only the G2 and NRG and how close that series will will or won't be type of thing and play out. It's going to be that C9 Fanatic one that swings a lot of things for me because if Cloud9 is able to take that, that does continue the trend that we have seen almost overwhelmingly of North America being able to get that edge head to head against EU. To me, it almost none of it matters though when you got a front runner like G2 that is so much ahead of where we feel the NA teams are right now and that type of power expectation, it all comes down to, well, yeah, that record's nice, but what is it against the real test of the European region, which is going to be G2? G2 feels like they're kind of lost in limbo. We're not quite in the elite LCK, LPL, but we're better than the West. They're kind of alone floating in those clouds up there. But uh, yeah, obviously still feeling very good about them in that NRG matchup. KT continues to draw their absolutely uh, insane run so far. Matching up against LNG now, who just played the competitive matchup against JDG. And this matchup, I'm drawn right into the jungle because Cuz and Tarzan have been two of the premier junglers so far at this event. Tarzan, we were expecting that to be the case, but Cuz, he's in full 17-1 and KT fine form to start Worlds. This is more than redemption for Cuz. This feels like a rebirth on KT Rolster, the way that he has been able to find this top-level form once again in his career and very happy to see so. And yes, this is going to be one heck of a matchup because of how vital both these players are into getting things off on the right foot for both of these teams, getting that advantage, starting that snowball, starting that pressure and start spreading it out to the rest of the squads. That is exactly what Cuz and Tarzan are so good at. Tarzan has been pretty darn fantastic at it so far this event. And when you've got players like Scout waiting to get powered up from it, Gala waiting to pop off, pretty good reason to get yourself moving in the jungle. I mean, LNG in this form is a legit top four team you're expecting, but KT's answered their tests so far and have had some dominant wins and even their loss to BLG. It was... It was very close. They could have had angles to win that game. So I'm not sleeping on KT being able to get the small upset in this set. I think what happened due to, you know, the way summer ended, the playoffs, the whole gauntlet situation, KT kind of got kicked down the road. As we're talking about these amazing elite teams, you kind of start to forget and lump KT in with everybody else at the event, which is unfair because KT has certainly proven themselves to be anything but everybody else at this event and so far with the way that they have gone as you mentioned even with that blg loss this is the kt that we saw you know storm their way through the summer split in the lck this type of form this type of dominance we can see that against lng man that would be one heck of a win for the lck much like the t1 blg matchup whoever loses this drop into two and two it doesn't matter who they play in that next round. You feel like there's a very high chance of them still getting through to knockouts. Yeah, and that's kind of, you know, one of the most interesting things about this Swiss stage is you do have these other opportunities. It is not just that one and done in your group and how that plays out, blah, 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 all that stuff. You have these next day, these next situations where, you know what? Yes, we're getting a fantastic series. And again, we're getting a lot of fantastic series, but if we hyper-focus in KTLNG, knowing that whatever happens, however this plays out, that loser still gets another series ahead of them. That's what I'm looking for. That's what the Swiss stage is bringing us this year. And that's another added, I think, mental uh, approach that teams haven't had to adapt to before at Worlds is, okay, LNG, hard-fought series. You lose to JDG. Got to bounce back mentally because you're still in it and losing these best of threes, even if they drop to KT again, that's two straight series losses to kind of refocus and say, guys, we're still one best of three away from advancing to top eight. And as soon as you make quarterfinals, it's a clean slate. The rest hasn't mattered up to that point. Momentum is something that does track, is something that you can't quantify exactly in statistics and everything else. And everyone tells you, you know, it's, a, you know, it's a crutch to lean on type of thing. It exists. It's flat out there, these type of things. And you can pick it up at an event like this as well. And one of the other things that we do talk about we talked about it before, the preparation, the difference in not being able to say these are the stack of teams that I'm playing. That's it. That's all I got to know. That stack's gone from three squads all the way to the full list of the main Swiss stage that we've got right now. You better be prepared for whatever your next day is.
no matchup, no series win would make us feel collectively better about both EU and the LCS than if the Mad Lions are somehow able to take down Weibo Gaming. It's obviously a tall task. They are going to be huge underdogs. If you're painting the angle for them to get the upset over Weibo, El Yoya is the number one advantage you feel like Mad Lions can have. But they need more than that. They need more than him maybe popping off on a Belveth to carry them to victory. I'm looking at Karzi and Hillisang, who have been inconsistent, but we've seen them in some of the biggest matches, especially in the playoffs in the LEC, where they step up to that elite level and they need that performance out of them against Weibo. When I'm looking at it, my problem with that is that when I'm looking at a player, and I mean, you can lump Karzi into this as well, but I'll take Hillisang's experience and history against squads like a Weibo Gaming, LPL, LCK, and sure, he'll take his chances. And we love Hillisang for that, of course, good and bad. Unfortunately, against these LPA, LPL and LCK teams, we start to see a little bit more of the bad or a little bit more of the enemy team was prepared for that type of angle or that type of opportunity and has the swift, and lethal counterpunch ready and up for it. Uh, that bottom lane sure can be an angle when you're looking at the mad lines. I really like that you first mentioned El Yoya because he can individually take over and bring some advantages to himself. It's going to be about sharing. He needs to spread that advantage, spread that wealth and skill to the rest of his teammates in order to make sure that these team fights, these later fights that are happening are even possible for these mad lines. Because if it's just El Yoya ahead and his power thing, you know what? I've got enough faith in the Weibo squad to find a way to group up, take them down. And then all of a sudden, the timing, it doesn't work out for the Mad Lions, whatever. They forget about the mid lane wave again. And then all of a sudden, the Nexus is gone. Yeah, I mean, straight up macro uh, decision failures like that are more than enough to cost you a game and a series against some of these LPL and LCK teams. Even a squad like Weibo that at times you're left scratching your head as a team like, and, and maybe we haven't seen the Giga Chad version of the Shy yet in the top side at this event. We've seen nope. a very team focused version of the Shy at this event. A matchup of the Shy versus Chasey is absolutely Giga favored in the side of Weibo Gaming. So, going to need a mega step up from the young man and on the side of Mad Lions. Chasey, at times throughout 2023, we were saying, wow, this is it. This is the guy, the top laner, who's going to hold his own against the LCK and the LPL. We haven't had that in EU, but the last two plus months or so hasn't felt that way at all. It has not been that answer in the last two months. Yes, it has seen the glimpses, the sparkles of that potential, of that opportunity to develop into that type of player for an LEC squad and carry that type of torch internationally. It's a lot to put on a young player. Yes, we all know that type of thing, but the potential was there. I'm saying the sparkles, the glimpses, you see it. This player has got to find a way to dig deep, step up in this matchup individually. And as well, that communication with someone like El Yoya is going to be key into getting that shutdown in the top side. Elimination season on the line. You know the shy is going to be cooking up at least one spicy <laughs> pick in a best of three. So be looking out for that, Chasey and Mad Lions. Last matchup, probably the most one-sided even more so than Mad Lions and Weibo is D plus Kia against the Gigabyte Marines even though the Marines showed up in a big way against Team Liquid especially in that game three you talked about momentum earlier well D plus is full steam ahead with that momentum ready to complete the miracle run part two for Deft and the boys they look angry and I'm looking at a couple of rumble players in Kana versus Kayeya as the key matchup for this one. Oh, yes, the rumble in the top side. Can't wait to see that pick contested. Hopefully not banned out. You know, I know rumble's pretty strong, that type of thing. I want to see it. I want to see these two get a chance to play that champion and dish out the battle in the top side. That's going to be a big one. I'm looking at Levi and Canyon in the jungle. Ken Levi, who is now, of course, stepped into more of a veteran status and Canyon and approaching there as well. Can we see something kooky, something crazy coming up in the jungle for Mr. Levi to get the surprise on the rest of the damn one squad? And as well, I'm looking in that mid lane and I'm also looking on the side of the, of the Marines and saying, Kati, you can't be having some of these mistakes, some of these whoopsies we saw against Team Liquid because we got an angry Mr. Showmaker on the other side who's looking to prove the rest of this event. You were wrong about damn D plus Kia and we're going to make sure that you feel it out there on the rift. 
And does any player embody momentum X mojo more than Showmaker when he's laughing, yucking it up on the rift, feeling good about his team? He plays 10 times better than if he's depressed putting Cassante copy pastas in the chat. And I think at this point for D plus key and for Showmaker, it's not that backs against the wall, you know, situation where they, you know, yes, win, lose, do or die, all these type of things. I think Showmaker's got the weight off of his shoulders at this point now going that we are pushed all the way to that back against the wall. My only option is win. That's the only thing I'm going to do right now. And Showmaker enjoying it, feeling that type of heat, that can be a lethal combo for D plus key keep doubting us he says just keep it going you know kellen leveled up a little bit so across the board obviously uh d plus you're feeling very good about this matchup but hey gam bounced back in such a big way from the level they were at in that first round of the playing stage i'm not gonna fully count them out yes they're massive underdogs but we've seen crazier upsets at worlds we have, and I think the other thing is going to be looking at in this matchup is Pallet in that bottom lane as well, seeing what he's going to be able to do, what type of you know playmaking things he can do, because he is a vital part of these team fights, of these great escapes, all these things happening for the Marines. It's going to be dialed up to 11 against a squad like D plus Kia for the Marines. Let's see if they got it. Either way, we're getting three teams moving through into that top eight. couple teams getting sent home, and then we're going to have... Oh, some spicy, spicy matchups going forward after. You're probably going to have a couple Western teams playing against some angry Eastern teams that were denied another shot at top eight, which doesn't bode well. No, not a good thing. Not something I'm looking forward to. But hey, Dunn still rises on another day. We still got Western squads at Worlds. Everything's okay for now. Everything's okay, you know. We're not the room's not on fire yet, and it, we've already picked up some wins. We've gotten a ton of NA versus EU matchups again. So far, the format continues to deliver time in and time out. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.